Hey guys, welcome back to Vinceville Customs. So today we're going to be working on my Super Silent Air 20A air compressor. Now, I've had this thing for well over 10 years and it's still going strong. I absolutely love it. And uh, I did a video on this a while back on how to change the oil. So I'll link that in the description because I'm going to be changing the oil again today. But I'm also going to be changing the filter in my uh, moisture trap. As you can see, my moisture trap is looking pretty nasty. And I haven't changed this filter in a long time. I always forget to do it every year. Every time I'm ready to do it, I write it down. I go to order a piece. I forget about it and it slips my mind. So I decided I finally need to do it again. Something I should probably do every year. But I just always forget. So it's time to get that changed as well. So we'll kind of go over that. Uh, but I just want to give some thoughts on this air compressor to anybody that's looking to get into the hobby or looking to maybe upgrade to get some better equipment. Now, I got this back in around 2006 to 2008. I forget exactly which year because I was in an apartment at the time and I had one of those old crappy uh, airbrush uh, compressors uh, that you get off of eBay and the thing would vibrate like crazy. So whenever I would come home late from work, uh, I would want to sit down and do some painting. It, I could, ha I would have to stop because it would be too loud at night and it would wake up uh, neighbors in the complex. So when I went to one of the Jersey Fest shows, which was before a show, it was at Dave's house, uh, he basically had one of these super silent, I think it was like the 40, which was like a lot bigger and it could hold like two lines into it. And it was so quiet, I absolutely loved it. And then I, but it was too big uh, for the apartment I was at the time. And he says, you should look at the smaller version, the 20A, they got one. So I looked it up. It was amazing. I ordered it at the time. I think it was only like $400 plus shipping. Now I think they're a little bit more money. Of course, it's just such a long time ago, but, uh, I've had it since and it's still running strong. I don't have any problems with any, uh, moisture in the compressor. It's still quiet. It still holds, uh, tight seals for the, uh, air. I'm not getting any leakage. It's just an amazing compressor and it's worth every single penny I've ever paid for it. Now, if you're getting into the hobby and you want to get something that you're figuring you, you know, you think you're going to be airbrushed for a long time, but you don't want a huge compressor, this is something you might want to look into because it's quiet. You won't wake up people in the house. Uh, we'll kind of go over that once I get all this stuff changed, uh, give you guys a better idea of the sound. And then uh, it's something you might want to look into. Um, I'm going to just keep, try to keep this going for another few years until I could probably upgrade to one of their bigger versions of them because I want to get one where I can hold two airbrush lines into it and I don't have to worry about popping out the uh, you know different airbrushes all the time. I would like to get one that's bigger that holds a bigger tank of air and I can have like two or three lines into it. So I'll probably be looking at the, maybe like the 40 version I think it is or the 30. I'll have to kind of do some more research on that. But for right now, what I do, this thing is absolutely amazing. So in my past video, I showed how to change the oil. Now, I know a couple people in that video and stuff says that what you could do is you could take this housing off and you can unscrew the, the dome piece over there and you can kind of pour out the oil. Now, that's maybe something I should do because I've had this for so long that maybe the oil in there really needs to be cleaned up. But I'll look into that maybe down the line. Maybe the next time I change the oil, I'll do that. Because uh, if I can get this going for another few years, I might just kind of upgrade to a bigger one anyway. Uh, I just want to keep this going for now. So what I do is there's a little spot over here that has like a little filter for um, like airflow, I guess. Uh, what I need to do is pop that off, turn this uh, upright, and pour out the oil there. Now I talked to Silent Air this week about this because I said, you know, that's the only down down thing about these uh, super silent airs they don't have any diagrams or how to's on how to keep these things up to date like whether you want to change parts or anything you have to kind of call them up and they kind of just like tell you what to do i would love them to have like a youtube channel or even diagrams or pictures on their site but they don't that's the only downside to this uh silent air stuff but it's still pretty straightforward so i'm just going to go in the garage now and get this changed uh, I'm going to go in there get the oil out of there. I'm going to pour in the fresh oil and get that done just to get this uh, set up. And then when we come back, what we'll do is I'll, I'll pop out this uh, filter here and then we'll change this filter and we'll kind of, you know, go over that. It's pretty simple. You just kind of twist this off. You unscrew the filter there. You put that one on and twist this back on and you're ready to go. Uh, but other than that, I have no problems with this at all. It's still running strong. It's something definitely to look into for any of those who are trying to get into the hobby. So I'm going to go into the garage now. I'll get this oil changed up. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just kind of leave it up right for a while. Just get all that oil dripped out of there. And then uh, I'll pour in some fresh oil when we come back. Because uh, they have one thing over here, which is your little diagram for oil. 
And what it is is uh, this lets you know your oil has to be in the middle here. Now my oil uh, usually is kind of close to it, but it's kind of going down a little bit, but it's still fairly there. I still need to get that changed out. I'm pretty sure that oil uh, might be looking a little nasty, but pretty much uh, I don't think it's that bad. Like I said, this, this thing has been going on strong with no issues whatsoever. So let me go and get that oil changed. We'll come back. We'll start working on the filter trap, get that all cleaned up and everything. And then uh, we'll put my hose back on and we'll just listen to how quiet it is still. Okay, so I changed the oil. So I went into the outside. Uh, I turned this upside down. Uh, this right here, this little pour spout right here, there's this little air filter piece that goes on it like that just so you get like an airflow, but it makes sure it keeps everything clean. You pop that off and you just put like a hose or something and you turn this upside down and pour out the oil. So I poured out all the oil. Uh, of course, I missed a couple times and poured it onto the grass, but that's why you do it outside in the backyard, whatever. So you can see this is all the nasty oil that came out of it. Now there is more that came out of it, but I kind of let it uh, go into like a tin uh, container. Uh, and missed a lot of it so but at least I drained it out pretty well I got to the point where really I wasn't even getting any drips anymore of oil out of it And I was shaking this thing like crazy. I'm really tired from holding this thing up So after that was done I had to come back in here and uh, start pouring in the oil now That's a problem because that little piece is a pain in the ass to try to use this container So you want some kind of a funnel um, so a friend of mine gave me these uh, really soft plastic droppers, they're really cool, he gave me a bunch of them. So what I did is I cut off the top of it and I cut out the bottom and I put it in there like that and I had a nice good little funnel going in there without dripping any oil down there so it locked in pretty tight and it worked out really well. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my duster, I'm going to come in here and kind of dust this up a little bit, just get it cleaned up because it always sits on my floor underneath the desk so it gets dirty but that's pretty much what we'll do there. And then uh, the next step is make sure your oil is level. So right here, the oil is right at the middle, and that's where your oil line is supposed to be. Now, what I like to do, though, is I'll run this for about a week painting some stuff up, and then I'll let it sit on the floor, and I'll come back and I'll look at it in like a week. Sometimes I might have put too much oil in there, and after it spins, it comes down, it might go up a little higher. And that's fine, I don't think it's the end of the world, but if I turn it on a couple times and I turn it off and that oil does not come back up to this middle line, then I know I need to add more. But that's a good thing about ordering from a silent air, you get a nice good big container and I got plenty of extra in case anything happens. So, next step is I'm going to clean this up, uh, going to dust it a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll change the filter on the moisture trap. All right, so I know this is probably gonna drip or come out nasty looking, so it's best to kind of do it uh, a little bit easier. So what we do is we need to turn this this way. This piece will come out. So I'm gonna actually go in the, after I get this out, I'm gonna go and wash this down. But we're gonna get the other filter out too, just in case this needs to drip out. And that's looking pretty nasty. And this, uh, we need to turn this way as well. Yeah, this thing definitely needed to be changed. Plus, turning it upside down didn't help either. Yeah, see, that's, uh, that hasn't been changed in a while. So we'll just throw that in the trash. And what we're going to do is kind of wipe all this down. Make sure get any things in there. I'll probably kind of look at this underneath a little bit more. Make sure everything is looking good. Um, I'm going to wash, wash this down. So I'll probably can go into the sink and really try to get a lot of this gunk out of there. Uh, it's looking pretty nasty. I don't need a new one because it works fine. I haven't had any issues with it. But we just want to make sure we uh, get that filter in there too and everything's looking good. So let me go get this cleaned out and we'll come okay, back. Time to start putting this all together. So I cleaned this out pretty well. Uh, make sure I dried it up. Make sure I get that cleaned out, all that oil. Uh, so now what we do is we put this piece back in. Make sure we put it in correctly. It's a little bit tricky. Okay, so that's in there pretty well, and what we do is we put the trap back on. So I just got to keep reminding myself to do this once a year. I always forget. What I'll do is I'll look online, maybe I can find some uh, cheaper ones, maybe change it every so often. And don't want to break it though, so we're on there pretty tight. 
and make sure that this is twisting nice. All right, so I'm gonna get my hose back on, uh, make sure that this is kind of cleaned out as well. Uh, I like to put Teflon tape on there only because I try to make sure everything is sealed up as best as I can. I know it's overboard, but I do it anyway. So let me get my hose back on. We'll uh, plug it in, we'll kick it on, we'll see how quiet it is. Oh, one other thing too, just to make sure, before I put that on, I just kind of put my flashlight in here, and I just made sure if there was anything in there gunked up or anything, I cleaned that out too. So I just made sure that that is looking pretty good. Also do it with the hose too, before I put it back on. All right, so we're all hooked back up, got my airbrush and everything's all set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the power and see how well this is working. Make sure there's no leaks, uh, make sure the Moisture trap is tight, make sure all the hose is tight, and see how things work. All right, turned off the moisture trap. Very, very quiet. Not hearing any leaks. It's turned off. So you know it's good once it turns off and it's not like uh, turning back on again. It should. Like all the years I've had it, when it's a full tank, it never kicks back on until I start kicking on the airbrush. So basically kick on the airbrush. No problems. Not feeling any moisture. Let's kick on a little bit of higher pressure. I'm not feeling any moisture coming on my hands. I feel cold air, but no moisture. You know, if uh, you're getting a lot of moisture on your airbrush, especially if you click it on your hand, and then you start seeing like drips or it's getting moisture and it starts coming down, then you got uh, moisture in your line. But as of right now, we're good. Um, and you can see it's very, very quiet still after all these years. And I, when you're about a f two feet cameras from it so we're about two feet something like that it's very quiet still no problem so I like to usually just kick on uh, this piece here just to make sure we're working good so a moisture trap is working no issues there yeah I, I, I think we're good so um, that is uh, getting my Super Silent 20A Air uh, back up and running with no issues. Changing the simple oil and uh, changing the moisture trap. So uh, other than that, like I said, in a week I'll just check the oil line just to make sure everything's running well with that. I'll keep an eye on the moisture trap just to make sure nothing uh, went wrong there. But other than that, it's working. It's not kicking back on. The tank is filled. And it looks like it's been running that it's been running for the past over 10 years again. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you're looking to get one, uh, you know, look into it. Uh, if you're looking to get an upgrade to something bigger, they got definitely bigger ones out there. I'll put their link in the description so you can check out their site and all the other products they got. But really great airbrush uh, compressor for those who are looking to get into the hobby and really upgrade your equipment. So, uh... There you go. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll be back with some more videos.